And now with the latest updates on security, Lieutenant Colonel Reserves Maurice Hirsch, Director of Legal Strategies with Palestinian Media Watch, international legal expert and former chief military prosecutor for Judea and Samaria. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, between breaking the wave and the recent killing of Ayman al-Sadi and Naim Zubaydi, how has the operational capabilities of Islamic Jihad and the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade been affected? I think that what we're seeing really in Jenin and, and, and also in the northern area of Judea and Samaria, particularly in, in, in Nabla Shem as well, is a joining of forces between the Palestinian Islamic Jihad on the one hand and the forces of the PLO Fatah, um, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. These are all incidents which are not necessarily new from this round of terror. We saw them also in the, in the terror war from 2000, 2005, where the terrorist groups got over their individual differences in order to forward the goal of promoting terrorism. What we're also seeing, and it was something that was mentioned by uh, um, the IDF chief of staff just a few weeks ago, was the increasing involvement of Iran in what's going on in Judea and Samaria. Um, what he's really talking about is Iranian forces actively supporting and promoting terrorism through their proxies, through Palestinian Islamic Jihad. That was the arrest of mm. Bassam al sadi that we saw at the beginning of, of, of August. And this is the development of a new phase of terrorism and of Palestinian terrorism heavily supported by Iran, um, who's now really calling the, the, calling the shots as the Palestinian Authority um, shows its ambivalence to any type of terror um, and really its own promotion of terror fitting into that general plan. All right, well, in the meantime, should we expect some sort of retaliation from the Islamic Jihad as well? You know, they, they tend to fire rockets at Israel whenever their senior members are killed. I think Islamic Jihad isn't something that they wait for us in order to, uh, to kill terrorists, sure. in order for them to uh, respond. They are constantly trying to develop new ways um, to carry out terror attacks and new terror attacks all the time. That is their sole purpose. Palestinian Islamic Jihad has no uh, um, leadership roles uh, um, as part of their, uh, their platform. They're purely a terrorist organization designed to murder Jews and exterminate Israel. Um, that's just their daily goal, to, to, to place the, the, the emphasis on a result of what Israel did is something which I think is, is, is not necessarily seeing the picture correctly. All right, now, the biggest issue recently seems not to come from organized terror groups, however, but rather lone actors with permits to work in Israel. Is it in Israel's interest, in your opinion, to cut down on work permits uh, in the interest of security or actually to raise the number of permits in a grassroots effort to, to create some sort of relations uh, and economic alternatives to becoming a martyr for the sake of pay for slay through the uh, the Palestinian Authority's terrorist salaries? Well, well, I, I think yesterday we saw, uh, uh, or, or the terrorist attack last week in Ariel, we saw a specific example of this, of the terrorist family saying that, well, he needed the money in order to support his family. His father had died, I think, uh, uh, when he was young and he was supporting his family. And so now he would be able to support them for the rest of his life. Um, this is something which, again, isn't necessarily connected to work permits or not. There's generally a, a lesser amount of people involved in terrorism um, if they have work permits. Um, it's the, obviously, there are exceptions to that rule. Um, but I don't think that's something which is necessarily connected. I think it needs to be part of a wider plan and a discussion of how many permits are allowed for Palestinian workers to come into Israel, um, definitely from the Gaza Strip. And, and also similarly from Judea and Samaria. Um, it's something which needs to be taken into account at the moment. Just to give a, 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 an idea, there are some 160,000 work permits um, that are active and mostly used at the moment. This is a huge amount of Palestinians that are in Israel every single day um, and something which we don't necessarily see bringing on active terrorism. What it has to be then understood is that the cost for terrorism of a family member has wider impl implications than just that one person either going to prison or dying. Um, and that's something which we've also mm. seen implemented recently and something which I think should be uh, 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 very much of, 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 of the leverage that's used in order to promote the fight against terrorism 
just to, uh, uh, to give you an idea as well, Palestinians who work in Israel earn anything between four to seven times right. the amount that they earn working in Judea and Samaria. So that, mm -hmm. that, that, there's a huge incentive to that. And, and that incentive should have a, a, a price when you're talking about right. active involvement in terrorism of first degree, uh, at least first degree members of the family. All right, Lieutenant Colonel Hirsch, thank you so much again for joining us. Thanks, Adam.